Hey guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode 10 of Practical Drupal Development. In this episode, we're finally going to move on and populate the next section of our website, which is going to be our news feed, or a blog feed, depending on whichever you choose to do. Now before we do that, I'd like you to download two modules, one of which being the Path Auto module, and the other being Token. Now go ahead and download both of these modules and extract them into to sites all modules and head back over to your site and then make sure you go ahead and turn those modules on there's only two of them I already have them turned on but just click your modules tab find path auto and token and turn them on so let's take a minute here and investigate what the article content type has to offer us that comes pre-installed with Drupal if we have our structure and content types hover article and click manage fields We'll see here that as always with a new Drupal content type, it gives you the option to enter in the title of your article or blog, a body field where you can enter in text for the body content, um, something called tags, which is a taxonomy term reference, which we will be covering in the next set of videos, as well as an image field to upload an image. Now I'm going to rearrange these a little bit so that they appear in a more logical order for us editing the site. I'm just going to drag the image field here up above body and I'm going to click save. We're not actually going to add anything else to this content type because it's pretty suitable for for us right now. We are going to add another taxonomy term reference here in the near future um, when we cover the taxonomy of Drupal. We need to head back over here to manage fields or manage display now um, and also ensure that we are image body tag here, which we are. And that's just a more logical display for this content type. So we're going to go ahead and close that down. And now let's add a couple of pieces of article content type. Let's go to content, add content, and add an article. We're going to name this article, um, Welcome to My New Site. We're going to choose an image here. We'll just pull the one-stop logo, upload that. I am going to head on over to Lipsum.com, and I'll include this link in the description as well. And it's a great place for gathering test content for your website. So if you're just trying to learn how to do this whole website thing, and you don't really feel like entering in a ton of content, um, you can come here to uh, Lipsum.com and click generate lorem ipsum and it will just generate for you several paragraphs of test content and we're just going to copy the first two here and paste that in as our body now i do want to cover one concept of this tagging system here real quick and we will cover it in much greater detail when we start talking about taxonomy but the tags are and taxonomy within Drupal are kind of a tagging system. Um, ignore the word tags here for right now as far as what taxonomy does. This is just what this field is called. But it allows us to tag different pieces of content in different ways. For example, what we're going to be doing in the upcoming tutorials is we are going to create a taxonomy that says events or news and we're going to then tag our articles either as an event or as a news feed and then we're going to separate it based on whether or not that article was tagged one way or the other so it allows us to take a single content type using the exact same fields because there really is no reason to have different fields in the event versus the article and we may add the date field just as a uh, in addition because it makes sense but for now we can then take the same exact content type and either tag it news versus blog uh, blog versus event and uh, maybe we'll do it that way we'll do a news feed and a blog feed separately now what the tags are set up to do is they will add themselves to the taxonomy list um, as you enter them. Now this will make much more sense when we cover taxonomy, but let's just say since this is our brand new site, we can tag this article as new site. 
and then we can hit a comma and space out here and this will allow us to then just add another tag they're all comma separated and so that we can collect uh, a couple of these articles together we're also going to tag this as news for right now and then we're just going to go ahead and save this and once this refreshes we're going to find ourselves sitting on our news page um, the images from the music theory series that I've just recently started. So if you're interested in music theory, maybe you'll want to head on over and check that out as well. Um, there's one thing that we clearly forgot to do and that's turn off the comments. And it's a good thing that we did forget that, um, because I want to show you something that happens. If we come up here to structure content types, the article and click on that, we didn't actually set up any of these defaults, so let's go ahead and do that now. Let's take off the promote to front page. We are going to leave on the authoring information because there may be multiple people blogging on your website, uh, as is what happens with uh, my company when we blog on birdeye.co. There's about eight of us writing blogs, and using the authoring information, you can know who wrote that blog. We are going to turn off the comment settings and we are going to take this out of the menu. Now when we save this content type, everything about it except the comments are actually going to close. Um, you'll see that they're still on here. But if I were to go up and create a new article page, the content, uh, the comments would actually be closed on that one. So we need to edit this and we need to close it manually for any of those articles that were created before we had set up that global setting there. So we're going to go ahead and manually close them here. Now the one thing that you may realize is that up here in the top, your uh, URL may have changed to content forward slash my uh, welcome my new site. And the reason that happened is because we have installed the path auto and token modules, which allow you to assign specific URL paths based on the content type that you're creating. Because as before, what we were getting would be something like node forward slash eight for this page. And this is what our URL would look like. Now, this isn't a very good URL path for anybody who may want to just try and find this article. It's going to be hard for end users to remember node 8. So we installed the path auto and token modules to allow us to automatically overwrite these URL paths. And you can see that when we click view, it changes back over to content, welcome my new site, and we're on the same page. So let's come up here to configure we'll go to search and metadata, URL aliases, and patterns. Here is where we will assign those patterns for the content types that will appear in the top. Now, you'll see here that by default, we have set up if a content type does not have a specific pattern, it will automatically go to content forward slash. And then this is a token that allows us to just pull that node's title. We are going to get rid of the content forward slash because that's kind of arbitrary. But for our articles, we want to set up a specific path for now that will be news forward slash the title of the article. So all we have to do is news forward slash and then that token of node colon title in the square brackets and that will automatically overwrite any of our news content type with the URL URL alias of news forward slash node title. So let's go ahead and save that close this down and what you'll notice is that our URL has not changed. Now if we were to create a new news article that would have the correct URL and that's because when you change and modify the URL aliases you need to come up to content select the the article that you have already published 
And from this drop down here, we need to select update URL alias. Click update, let Drupal do its thing, and when we close it down, it will refresh and you'll see that the page that we are on no longer exists. So if we come up here now to news forward slash welcome dash my new site, you'll see that we have our page. Now this is just a much better system for users to be able to find your pages, to know where they are and what section they're in when they're navigating through your site. If everything was just simply one stop forward slash node forward slash the node ID, or even just one, slot, one stop forward slash the page title, it could become very difficult for users to know what portion of your website they're actually in as they're navigating around. So by doing news forward slash the node title, a user now knows that when I'm looking at this page, I am in the news section of your site. So let's come on up here to content and let's add another article. And we are going to say, thank you for visiting. For now, I'm just going to throw in that same one stop logo. We're going to copy the same test content and we'll paste that in. And now I want to show you something that happens with this tagging system. Since we have added new tags um, via the last article, if we start typing in like new site, it's going to come up with the previously used tags that match the characters that we have. And we're going to just select news here and click save. Now at the bottom of this page, you can see here that the tags are displaying. And the cool thing about Drupal's taxonomy system, and we will cover this in greater detail in the upcoming tutorial, but when you click on one of these tags, it's going to link you over to Drupal's taxonomy view page. And it's going to show you a listing of all of the news articles or any content type sharing that field that have been tagged with that specific term. It also delivers you an RSS feed so that people can subscribe to this and see when new tags or new articles tagged with that term have been created. So it kind of creates a, a more dynamic backend overview system where you can link around from articles that are tagged with the same concept. So if you're owning a pet store and you're tagging a lot of things about new pet food, you can tag that new pet food and people can just click that tag and find themselves on an overview linking to all of the articles dealing with new pet food. Now, like I said, we'll cover this in much greater detail in the upcoming tutorial. But um, for now, just know that tagging allows you to tag articles and then those tags allow you to see other articles that have been tagged with the same thing. It's just a really good filing system for your website. So what we're going to do in the next video in this series is we are going to use views to create an overview for our news section. And what it's going to do is it's going to show the image of that page. It's going to show you the title of that page, and it's going to show you a trimmed body with a read more link. And this will just allow us to have a nice landing page that will display all of the articles that we've written recently, maybe just the last five per page with a pager. And then we'll do some really cool stuff with views infinite scroll that will just allow us to continue to scroll down and it'll just keep loading more and more articles. Now there is one other thing that I want to do here so that we can kind of finalize this content type and that's create an image style for this image. Let's come up to configuration media image styles and I've already created one called basic image so just click add style and name it basic image now this image style will just kind of globally be used for all of our pages that we land on that have an image we'll definitely be using different image styles for overview pages like we were just talking about but this will just be kind of a nice global image style that we can use so that we don't have to create 
an article image style and then a basic page image style and an about page image style. This is just kind of a nice globalized image style. Now we could create different ones if we wanted to. However, we'll just do it this way for now. Now the only thing that I added to this image style was a scale that had a width of 350 and we did not allow the upscaling. If I click edit here, you can see that the allow upscaling has not been selected. The reason being is the only thing we want to do is scale down images whose widths are wider than 350. We want to leave their heights proportionately whatever they become. That way the end user can see all of the image. It's just going to be condensed down a little bit. So we'll close that down. And now we need to come up to structure, content types, article, and manage display. And here you can see that we have the image format of an image and this will grow because we are going to later on install the color box module which will allow for the image to pop up in a, a little shadow box style thing and then you can see a much larger version of that image. But for now all we have is the image and if we click this little gear icon here to the far right, we can change our image style from large to our new basic image. Click update, save, and go ahead and close that down. And you'll see that our image style has now changed here. Now what we're going to do in the theming portion of this series is float this image over to the right here and allow this content to just flow up next to it. So we are going to do some cool stuff with that. I know that we have covered a lot of stuff in this tutorial really quickly, but it's nothing that we really haven't covered before. We've learned how to create content types. We know what each of those fields does, and we know how to create content. We were just doing it for a different content type. So go ahead and load your site up with as many articles as you see fit, um, and then we'll move on to the next tutorial. Um, so if you like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and I will see you in episode 11 of One Stop How To Guys Practical Drupal Development.